In this video, I'm gonna cover the testing methodology that I use to do my fandom's performance reviews. Now, ultimately, I do two sets of testing, and there's a similar methodology for both sets of testing. So for each methodology, what I'm doing is I am trying to create a lot of variability in the data, and this is good for machine learning techniques, and I'll get into that in a little bit. So how I'm creating this variability is two ways. One, I range the fan speeds. So I do hundreds of tests that measure the temperature performance at a given percent fan speed. So let's say I'm running the CPU at 100% and I will test to see how the cooling is or what the temperature is at 100% fan speed. Once I have that metric, I'll drop the fan speed down to 90% and then I'll get that piece of information. And I'll continue to do that over a range of fan speeds. So for CPU fan speeds, I usually range between 20% as the minimum and 100% at the maximum from a percent fan speed basis. And when I'm thinking about the uh, computer fans, so something that would go onto a computer case, those I generally range from zero to 100%. And I usually test the front fans in isolation, the back fans in isolation, as well as all the fans working in sync together. Now, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm running at each test, and again, I'm, I'm waiting for stabilized information to come through, and once I have the temperature stabilized at a percent speed, uh, I then capture and take that information and then record it. Now, I also change one other factor, which is the heat going to the CPU, and I do that through two different methods. One, I change how many cores are being used for stress tests. So Prime95 allows me to choose how many cores are going to drive the performance. And this also allows me to understand how each core is contributing to the heat of the CPU. In addition to that, I also change how much power is going to the cores or how much power is going to the CPU in the BIOS. That allows me to fluctuate the core or fluctuate the power that's going to the CPU in a variety of methods. Now, what I'm, again, what I've covered is I'm changing two things on a consistent basis. One is the fan percent speeds, and the second is how much power is going to the CPU. Now, what I'm doing with all this variation is allows me to understand the differences in, in the impacts. And when I'm running all these processes, I'm collecting lots of data. I'm collecting how much watts is going to the CPU, which cores are being active, how many watts are going to each core, what is the ambient temperature, what is the fan speed for all the various fans on an individual basis. So I get each individual fan's RPM speed. And all this information I collect and it allows me to then use machine learning models to help attribute to the variety of factors at play. So for example, the temperature, ambient temperatures impact performance in a certain way. How fast the fans are, are spinning impacts how cool the CPU is going to be. Um, how many watts are going to a particular core matters. So not all cores are made equal. So one core may produce more heat than another core, which may not produce as much heat. So if the cores are produced unevenly, I'm capturing that information. And with that variation, the machine learning models helps me attribute to all those components that are going to drive the differences. Now, once I have the machine learning model and I understand how each component of the variation is impacting the performance, so how much heat is being produced by core or the fan speed, etc., I then hold certain things constant and only change the things that matter. So what that means is all those variety of items that are impact performance, I freeze them and then I only change the items that are, matter to you. So for example, I will hold everything but the fan speed constant and see how that plays out. And you can see that in the line graphs. I'll then fluctuate the heat going to the CPU and see how that impacts performance. And you guys see that as the charts grow. And I will also look at the differences between the front and rear and, and maybe hold the back fans in isolation at zero or the front fans in isolation or maybe I'm holding the CPU or I do hold the CPU speed constant when I'm looking at the fan's performance on the front and rear case. Now, the reason or the basis for me doing this methodology is that I felt that the information that I'm providing wasn't available. And that's why I, I created my YouTube channel so I could you know, fulfill this need and I actually enjoy the process and the methodology. And another thing to take away from this is what I've described takes a lot of testing. Now, my test procedures aren't just one and done. It is hundreds of tests. So I have an open test case bench right here in front of me. 
and that runs approximately four 142 tests, and that takes about three or four days of constant running. And I'm changing all the things that I mentioned previously. What actually takes more time is the case fans, and that's just because a lot more is at play. So there's a lot more contributing to how hot or how cold that CPU is. So it takes more to create the variation to understand what's driving what. So how much is the CPU cooler contributing performance versus the front fans versus the back fans, et cetera. Now, ultimately I wanna bring all this information to a website and that is what I'm working on currently. And with that, you can see and, and compare all sorts of things and that's the ultimate goal of, of what I'm trying to achieve. And if you listen to this video and you really enjoy what I've, I've shared and you think what I'm doing is really cool, go ahead and hit that subscribe and like button to help support me in my journey. Now, if you have any comments or any feedback on my methodology, go ahead and comment below. I love to hear any comments or if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. But I hope that you appreciate what I've shared with you today and I look forward to creating more videos.